Uh, now I'm going to, since we, are, we have one talk on heart, uh, then whenever we discuss about heart at IIT Kharagpur, then one name comes to our mind. And that is the only resident doctor, as well as an engineer, Professor Shujai Guha, who has worked extensively in his illustrious career on various aspects of use of engineering in various facets of medicine. So I would now request Professor Guha to deliver his uh, lecture and illuminate us on artificial heart and other related discoveries of his. Professor Guha, please. Uh, I really did not think of speaking on my work. Uh, you have heard so much of high level research and practical application from the IIT as well as from outside. So I thought that to give you an opportunity to laugh. <clears throat> an engineer, I am an engineer basically, taking a view of medicine. Now, we have allopathy, we have homeopathy, so why not have an engineering view, which I am calling as IIT pathy. Okay. The purpose is to give individualized medicine. Each individual is unique and we want to give individualized medicine. Now, this is a direction which is very much important and going on world over. The <clears throat> direction being taken is through the route of genomics. Fine, that is very a right approach and it will uh, give individualized medicine as, for example, which was mentioned a few minutes ago also. There is a possible alternative. While the genomics things will go on and maybe from one will come to even more fundamental than the genome, some molecular arrangements, that will come. Can we think in the IIT system of something different? Something which relates to all this expertise in signals and systems. It is possible. Next. Now, I will <clears throat> go to this one. We have allopathy. It is giving a opposite and homeopathy is giving the same. Now in all these definitions, the crux is disease. The disease is being addressed. Now there is a small story that six blind people went to the zoo to see an elephant. One held the trunk and said, oh, it's like a <clears throat> whip, thick whip. Another held the leg, oh, it's like a pillar. So the same thing can be seen in different ways, is how you see. Right. The essence of disease is loss of function and pain. These are the essence of what we call disease. Right. I have been working for a very long time with the blind. We would say that blindness coming is a loss of function. But in my experience, I used to work with blind people at in the 
Blind Relief Association in New Delhi, which is near the Obadai Hotel. And there's a very busy street, very busy. It's scary to cross that street. It's very scary. But I realized that if I shut my eyes and I hold the arm of a blind person, the blind person takes me across very comfortably. Very comfortably. Much better than I would do. We analyze this thing and we realize what is happening is the sighted person looks to the left, uh, right, uh, sees what is happening in the right, he looks to the left and sees a thing. The blind person is getting vibrations from all around. So, can we not say that <clears throat> this loss of sight is not a loss of function? I had traveled also <clears throat> with one individual, Mr. Advani, <clears throat> was blind, to USA. I was surprised that sitting on the aircraft, he would describe the aircraft, the description of the people sitting there. <clears throat> and in the uh, <clears throat> new place, we had gone to a new place in USA, he would cross the streets and everything very well. <clears throat> he would count notes. <clears throat> I, the US dollars all are of the same size. Right? But he would know the difference totally. So there could be another point of view. Now, <clears throat> that means a function. The other thing is pain. Pain also, there are communities where pain is virtually taken as a pleasure. In, in the Grecian literature, the Spartacus, they would inflict pain and that was a pleasure. In, India has worked with Tibetan women coming to the hospital. Uh, you do an operation on them without anesthesia. They like it. I was surprised. So the pain also is something, a perception of the mind. You can have a different point of view. So let us think of disease in a different term. Let us not think in terms of just that pain and uh, uh, deviation from the normal as pain coming and loss of function, but can we not take it as a deviation of a multi-parameter system. A small deviation in the mechanical elasticity of different regions, giving a pattern, can be a very good description. It will give a deviation. The, we have in the IIT in the engineering, the mechanical systems, forces. And let me tell you, forces are very important in respect of life. Even our development of the embryo, the forces that are there cause the various changes that are there. Very recently, it has been shown that in the <clears throat> body, biological system, they are mechanical ratchets. The ratchet that we use in a ball pen or other things, they are mechanical ratchets. So force is a, and pressure are very good descriptors. So small changes in the force in the tissue, a full mapping is a descriptor. Then again, Electricity, charge, is very fundamental in life. 
very, very fundamental. We cannot live without a second without electricity in our body. So, there are electrical charges, positive and negative charges on the surface of all our cells. We can map the charges inside the surface as well as in the whole cells. That becomes another descriptor. Then we have chemical engineering dealing with mass flow, chemical flow. That is also a possibility of descriptors. So you can have a array of descriptors and the deviation of that pattern of descriptors could be taken as disease. And that also includes the various signals. We could call that as disease. What is the advantage? Number one, that we will be able to know whether a person is going to the wrong direction much, much earlier than the present state. Because in present state, it is essentially the pain and the uh, loss of function. Even by the simple by chemical tests, etc., doing uh, a cholesterol, etc., is a very late description. Whereas, if we use our uh, knowledge of engineering sciences, we can have a full description of the <clears throat> human being. <clears throat> Some of the parameters that could be used is tissue elasticity, and I am talking of micro regions, so that you get, get a pattern. <clears throat> One can get the shear modulus of different tissues, and <clears throat> a dermatologist who is very intelligent will tell you that very early the <clears throat> tissue elasticity does change. So <clears throat> if you do it in a pattern form and the interactions so that the micro balance is achieved, we will get a very good discovery. Then hysteresis of tissue, the fatigue, then the electrical impedance. Uh, Dr. Mandel mentioned the uh, needs of the defense. Back in 1962, when the Indochina war was there, there was a lot of incidents of pulmonary edema and loss of function. So the uh, defense had approached us and we developed a method where we could predict that this individual <clears throat> will, if not acclimatized very the long step, would develop pulmonary edema by means of electrical impedance. And that was verified and studied <clears throat> uh, on uh, soldiers who were taken to Ladakh and all. <clears throat> so electrical impedance can be a, a very good descriptor. But again, in different regions, I'm not talking of just one region. And the linkages, the feedbacks that are going on. So that is required. That requires the highest level of uh, systems engineering. Then optical transmission, reflectance, porosity, etc. So the sum and substance is that <clears throat> you create a uh, descriptor for the human being. And if it is changing, yes, that is disease. Then one can do corrective. Why is it necessary that always we must use drugs? No. There is a system of physical medicine which uses various physical methods, but it is very crude, very, very crude. We can do much better if we use advanced. For example, you know, a laser beam can give a mechanical force. 
a laser beam gives a mechanical force. A light beam can give a mechanical force. We can suppose the shear model hysteresis has been affected. We can give in a very micro way uh, small forces all over the body to again bring it to the correct level. We can give small electrical stimuli at all levels. We can change the chemical flow by various manipulations, mostly from the outside. So this can be done at a much earlier stage than uh, the regular treatment is there. So therefore, this will be individualized and it will be real preventive medicine. Real preventive medicine. So, uh, I will say that if you open your mind and see things from a different perspective, one can come up with a uh, system of medicine which really will take the strength of uh, engineering technology. It's a possibility. And it is something which can flow very easily from the various faculty expertise. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Guha, for such an illuminating and cerebral talk on what we can do if we can look at problems in a different way and he spoke in a language that both the